Hello everybody and welcome to my light novel review of the book Mikagura School Suites. This is volume number one in the light novel series by Last Note. This book is told in the first person. It is sort of a high school battle supernatural type story. It is based on a series of Vocaloid songs which Last Note did. There is an anime series approximately at I believe it had 12 episodes. It came out before the series was completed. Now, as far as I can tell, very much like Kagero Days, which is another series based on Vocaloid songs, the anime doesn't really specifically follow the storylines as they appear in the light novel. And I believe there is a manga also, which pretty much is the same thing. They're not necessarily all equal adaptations of the other. They all sort of have slightly different elements to them. Now, in this book, we are with main character Aruna, and she is, of course, telling the story in the first person. She is a very hyper girl about to enter into high school, and she's struggled a great deal to figure out which high school she should go to. And so her cousin sort of suggests, well, maybe you'd like to check out my high school. And he gives her a pamphlet. Well, the pamphlet seals the deal, not because it contains incredible information about the school's academics or its clubs, but because there's a really beautiful girl wearing a really cute school outfit. That's what kind of girl Aruna is. She is really like an out-of-control Yuri character who is incredibly in love with all good girls and beautiful girls, has fantasies about marrying girls, and so forth. She ends up getting accepted to this high school under somewhat mysterious circumstances, and when she arrives there, she discovers that the school is very, very odd. First of all, everybody must join a club. The clubs are all cultural-based, none of them are sports clubs. And the clubs do battle with one another to earn points and prestige, which the type of lodgings you get, the type of food you're allowed to eat, are all dependent on the outcome of these battles. And that's not even mentioning the one of the instructors who's a cat with wings that flies through the sky and talks in human language and can only be seen by students and staff. There's a lot going on in this book. Um, let's get into sort of talking a bit about this, though. This book is at times exhausting. Reading Aruna is like watching an ADHD dog. Squirrel, 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 shiny, 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 squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. It is tiring at times. The vast majority of the books, like this print edition is over 300 pages, but it's uh, from One Piece books, so they use a slightly solar, uh, smaller trim size. So it'll be probably a little over 200 pages on, say, a Yen on size novel. The vast majority of it is dedicated to Aruna's constant fantasizing about some pretty girl or about how she'd impress some pretty girl. And in the end, she is just this completely weird, insane character that nobody really knows what to make of. And she pretty much isolates herself, even when at the same time, she keeps telling us how she's always been really popular and the center of attention. And... The thing is, is that she is an incredibly unreliable narrator because of that. And, and like I said, at the same time, she's a very tiring narrator because of that. And there's times in the book where you're not even sure, like, what's really happening or if this is just another one of her daydreams and so forth. And the problem, I think, with this book is that it dedicates so much time and energy to her meanderings, that there's an okay story going on underneath this, but it all seems really rushed. Like, the end bit, which should be the climax of the book, which should sort of start to reveal the true story, because really most of the book up to this point has been how she got it, you know, how she's deciding to get into the school, getting into the school, getting acclimatized to the school, checking out different clubs... So most of the book is just introduction. And it's this end part that we finally start to get an idea of what's going on. And it's so rushed. 
Like, I kid you not, more pages were dedicated to a completely fantasized way that Aruna wakes up in the morning than were dedicated to actually talking about how her awakening sort of starts to happen in the book. And we have a whole bunch of other things that I guess are just supposed to be nuggets to make us really curious and interested, but they just seem thrown in because there's been no build-up to them. There's been nothing to really make us truly think that, oh, this is what this is all building up to, and this is what the story is, and it's just not there. Like, it just really gets thrown in in a haphazard way. And even reading Aruna as a character, she is such a caricature that it makes it really hard to take her seriously in any way whatsoever. You know, unlike, say, uh, another book that features a first-person narrator that can be a tad unreliable, uh, my teenage romantic comedy is wrong as I expected, in the case of Hachiman, his misperceptions of himself feel more like a defense. They feel more like he is a tragic character who is incapable of truly relating to people and so he hides behind it or he's even afraid of interacting with people because of past hurts. Eruna is not like that. She just seems completely oblivious. She doesn't seem to get why everybody thinks that she's weird and even when she has a moment of clarity that you think to yourself finally she's going to kind of put it together why everybody's keeping their distance and why everybody thinks that she's psycho it's gone. That moment of revelation does not pay off for longer than a paragraph, and off we go again to squirrel, squirrel, shiny, shiny, ball, ball, off we go. I, like, part of me really wants to hate this book. I have to be honest. I, you know, it was, there were parts that was frustrating to me, and then yet there were moments where I sort of thought, you know, if you just gave us a little bit more of this, it would be interesting. If you just gave us a little bit more of that, or if you just had built up to this moment a little bit more, it would have been a really good payoff. But it just doesn't happen like that. And so it just, in the end, this book just made me feel kind of frustrated and a little bit just tired. <laughs> and there was a small part of me that kind of thought, you know, this could be something. Like, I do remember, you know, finishing the first book of Kagero Days and feeling the same way. Feeling kind of very mixed feelings about it. Feeling not too sure what I really thought about the characters or the book or the story. And I ended up kind of getting into that series. I'd say I'm a little less on the fence of this one. I'm probably leaning more to the, oh, I don't know if I can go through another book of this main character. But but yet, there's still a little bit of story there that I'm kind of like, mm, is that going to become something? The series, uh, if I recall, is only eight volumes long. It is complete in Japan. So it's not like you're in the long haul for, say, a 20-novel long series. And I really do believe I would go completely out of my skull if I had to read this same main character without any development over 20 novels. Um, so I kind of feel really conflicted about this one. Like I said, there's little nuggets in there that I'm kind of like, and because of my experiences with other novels, like I said, Kagero Days, certainly very similar because, I mean, again, it's written by a Vocaloid artist. It was their first novel. Same thing with this one. Um, so I'm a little hesitant, but I might check out Volume 2 just to, just to see if anything changes. Um, I don't have a lot of high hopes, but we'll see. And it's really disappointing to me because we don't have a lot of just that sort of pure, somewhat supernatural high school battle type light novels. I mean, the closest we probably have is the irregular at Magic High School. Um, I mean, everything else is pretty much like we have probably the next closest would be in terms of slice of life type stuff would be The Devil is a Part-Timer. 
But again, that's not quite the same genre because it's not like they're in an enclosed, regulated space like a school where these kind of actions are sanctioned, which gives the story slightly a different spin to it. Um, so we don't have a lot of light novels in English that are like this type of story. And that's too bad that this one is not really on point because I would like to read some more stuff like that because I've liked some anime that were along those lines. So Mikagura School Suite, volume number one, really mixed feelings about this one. Um, again, the main character, it is tiring reading her. There are some story beats in here that I thought could show potential for something interesting. When it finally got to the point, I was kind of like, this is good, but I just felt that it was really rushed. So I'm not too sure about volume number two on this one. Uh, I don't think it's one that I will rush to get, but maybe if I find myself in a slow month, I'll pick it up just to see if the series evolves in any way or if it pretty much stays exactly like this one has. So those are my thoughts on volume number one of Mikagura School Suite, volume number one. Now to kind of decompress, I'm going to read something that's a little bit warm and fuzzy, and that'll be volume number two of If It's For My Daughter, I'd Even Defeat a Demon Lord. Uh, the first volume of this, very slice of life, very like, oh, kind of like melt yourself a little bit warm and squishy. But... Uh, <laughs> But I'm going to be reading that. That'll be my next review. It'll be volume two of that series. So if you're new to the channel and you love light novels, you should consider subscribing. I review two to three volumes every single week, plus do a weekly countdown of the top 10 light novels in Japan. Thank you all for joining me in this video, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.